If you want to do a unique activity in Japan, then renting an authentic kimono and strolling around in it for a day is something that you should not miss. The kimono is a beautiful and elegant full-length robe that is used to be worn by the Japanese on a daily basis. Nowadays, however, it is only worn by locals during graduation programs, the ceremonies, festivals, and other formal events. Nevertheless, Japan's geisha and sumo wrestlers still wear it almost every day. The term kimono literally translates to garment, and the word ki means to wear, and then the word mono, which means thing or object. Now, there are different types of kimono, such as the yukata, furisode, hakama, and so many others. But as a standard, a kimono is a straight T-shaped robe that falls to the ankles along with attached collars and long wide sleeves. And then they are wrapped around the body, always with the left side over the right. And they are secured by a sash called as obi, which is tied at the back. To finish it off, it is worn with traditional footwear and split toe socks. Nowadays, the best place to rent and wear a kimono would be in the ancient city of Kyoto. But if you're short on time and can only explore the capital of Tokyo, just head over to the district of Asakusa and make full use of its grand shrine, temple, as well as its olden Edo buildings and surroundings that serve as perfect backdrops for your kimono pictures. Now there are a number of kimono rental shops in Asakusa and a place that I highly recommend is Yae because of their location, beautiful kimono designs, and hairstyling service. Not to mention, their staff speaks English well. Anyhow, if you want a discounted rate, I advise booking through KK Day via the link that I'm providing in the description box below. Of course, you can walk into Yae without a reservation, but I don't advise that because with the number of customers that they have, you might either wait a long time or not be accommodated at all. As of 2019, these are the rates of their kimono rentals, and this fee already includes the complete kimono attire, staff assistance, hair styling, sandals or zori, socks or tabi, hair ornaments, tote bag, other accessories, and the whole rental experience. You only need to be back by 5.30 p.m. to return the kimono. The address of Yae can easily be reached by following the directions on Google Maps. Otherwise, just look for the Orange Avenue shopping street and about a 2-minute walk ahead, you'll find this side street where the sign of Yae is set up. I recommend that you arrive as early as 9.30 a.m. so that you have first dibs on the kimono design choices. And of course, this is also to maximize your rental time. Now the kimono rental goes like this as per my experience. After they confirmed our booking, they gave us big bags with unique number tags for storing our other belongings, extra clothing, and shoes. Next, they led us to the kimono area and in here, I can clearly see the wide range of designs that they have. The staff guided me and offered suggestions along the way but of course, I was free to choose what I like. You can take your time doing this but as a courtesy, don't take too long. At that time, I had a fully sodded plan and I ended up choosing this red and black combination. The staff then confirmed that it was the right length and then proceeded to give us some socks or tabi as well as led us to the tote bag section. Naturally, I stored all of my valuables in this tote bag and left the rest in the bigger bag. Next up, we had to go down one floor via the elevator together with all our bags because this is the area where they do all the final touches. Depending on the flow of the customers, you can either have your hair styled first or have your kimono assembled. But for me, they assembled my kimono first. Now, I didn't manage to get a proper recording of the process, but I do have this old recording here, which is from a different rental shop. Anyway, as you will see, putting on a kimono rental is a meticulous process that requires a lot of layers and knots, and this can take up to 30 minutes or more. Now, it helps to note that as they do all of these layers and knots, it can get really tight. So always let your dresser know if you're on the brink of death. And as they go along, you will find that everything will feel stuffy and that your curves will slowly become non-existent. But don't worry, this is a typical feature for wearing a kimono because apparently the traditional view of beauty in women in Japan depicts a straight figure with clothing that is elaborate and which constricts the footsteps. Besides, it is believed that this style gives men the chance to wonder more about what's underneath. As they say, less is more. And once I was done and feeling like a dignified lady, I moved on to the hairstyling section. In here, they have a simple photo book of different hairstyles as well as a gazillion of hair accessories on the table that I could choose from. And in the end, I chose this look. Now, I must say that their stylists were really good. 
despite being fast workers. In fact, I think that what they did to my hair is one of the most intricate and detailed style that I have ever had in my entire life. So yeah, I was really pleased with it. Before finally heading out to Asakusa's streets, they gave us our sandals or zori. By the way, if you want to put some added flair on your photos, you can also rent this traditional Japanese umbrella for only 500 yen. Moreover, you can also book a professional photographer through Yae for an added fee. And for a complete experience, you can also pay for a rickshaw ride tour around Asakusa. Meanwhile, for ideas on what you can do around Asakusa, you can click the link above. But of course, the places that are not to be missed are the Asakusa Shrine, Sensoji Temple, and Nakamise Dori Street among many others. And yes, these are all a few minutes walk away from Yae. Anyhow, apart from taking a crazy number of photos in these locations, I also had a lot of fun eating the local food in the restaurants nearby. But overall, if this is your first time doing a kimono rental, here are some of my tips. When walking, don't take wide strides. Do small in-toe steps. And when you sit down and stand up, put your hands and feet together with your back straight. But actually, it's not that hard to keep your back straight because the stiff obi will help keep it that way. As for when you're taking photos, make your stance a bit diagonal in order to slightly show your obi's back as well as your hairstyle. It also helps to put one feet on top of the other as you lean a bit backwards. And so, as you walk in Asakusa like this, I think you would notice how you will turn into some sort of mini celebrity for a day, especially with how people would want to take a photo of you and with you. In fact, apart from the local people who were complimenting my furisore, there were also a number of tourists who were asking for my photo. There was even a group of Chinese Chinese tourists who talked to me in Japanese, thinking that I was a local, and it was all quite hilarious and fun. By the way, there is one question that I keep on receiving, and it's this. Is it cultural appropriation to wear a kimono in Japan as a foreigner? No, not at all. The Japanese never refer to it as cultural appropriation because they deem it more as cultural appreciation. Besides, they like it a lot when other nationalities take interest in their culture, customs, and clothing, which is much like South Korea's attitude towards foreigners who are also renting their traditional clothing which is called as hanbok. So yes, this is why makeover studios and rental shops in Japan are highly popular and accepted. My experience also serves as proof because like what I said, a lot of Japanese people have walked up to me to appreciate how I was wearing a kimono. And some old people even gave me a thumbs up. All in all, I hope that you have found this video helpful and have gained a better understanding of how you can rent a kimono in Tokyo, Japan. But if you want a more detailed guide, you can check out the link above or the link that I will be posting in the description box below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!